yesterday there was the ceremony for the closing of the International Year of Chemistry. The ceremony was in Brussels. I really wanted to be there, but unfortunately I had to be in London. And I missed a really exciting piece of news. The new names for elements 114 and 116. They haven't actually officially approved the names yet, but they've said this is the names that we're considering. Elements 114 and 116 were discovered through a collaboration between a lab in Russia and a lab in America. So one name is Russian and the other name is American. The name for element 114 is fluorovium with the symbol FL, big F, little L. The other name, 116, suggested is livermorium with the symbol LV. So let me try and explain to you why they've chosen those names and my feelings about them. First of all, I'm really delighted that the two names have signaled collaboration between Russia and the United States. This is a really good symbol of peace between the two countries. Now, the first element, that's 114, is named after the scientist who founded the lab in Dubna, where the elements were actually synthesized. And his name, if you look at it in English letters, is Flerov. His full name is Georgi Nikolaevich Flerov. The difficulty that I see with this name is that the English letter that looks like E is in Russian, in his name, pronounced like Yo, like the beginning of yogurt. The difficulty, therefore, is that the way the Russians would pronounce this name and the name of the scientist that we are honouring will not be properly reflected by the way that people will pronounce it because they'll pronounce it fluorovium or something like that where the E is pronounced like an English E. The obvious way to pronounce it is fluorovium but the way you should say it's fluorovium, fluorovium fluorovium, fluorovium, fluorovium. That's just a perhaps, you can argue some of the other names are not pronounced in the correct way, so perhaps it doesn't matter. And the other one, Livermorium, is named after the Lawrence Livermore Lab, which created some of the elements that were used as the targets for the big experiment in the synthesis. That was named after Lawrence, Ernest Lawrence, who um, was the inventor of the cyclotron. You can hear about that on our video about Lawrenceum. The lab is called Lawrence Livermore and it was founded in 1952 to make atomic bombs at the height of the Cold War. So if you like, it was a really pretty anti-communist, anti-Russian institution. So the fact that it is now being chosen as a name for an element that was synthesized in Russia is a wonderful indication of peace. Livermore is, I believe, the name of the place, not far from San Francisco where the lab was. So it was the Lawrence Lab at, in the city of Livermore. So it was the Lawrence Livermore Lab. I think the name is okay, but Livermorium sounds to me, I don't know why, perhaps by some sort of word association, slightly sad in the sense of mournful because it sounds rather like the English word in memoriam which means um, in memory of somebody who's died. But I'm, from the point of view of pronunciation and so on, livermorium is fine. These elements are just a few atoms that have been made, not all at once, one atom at a time over a period of months. So nobody knows anything about the properties of these elements but if you look at the periodic table, here you can see that element 114 here is in the same group, group 14, as carbon, silicon and so on and lead. So you would expect if you could get enough atoms all at once that 114 would be very heavy, dense metal, rather like lead. Element 116 is in the same group 
as polonium. I don't really know what the properties of polonium are. Tellurium is a very smelly element. Its chemicals smell dreadful. So it's possible that if you could make compounds of element 116, they would be the smelliest compounds in the periodic table. Hydrogen livermorium, hydrogen um, livermoride would be really something that would smell. But I must say that when we started periodic videos three and a half years ago, I never dreamt that there would be all these new elements that were being named. And two being named on one day is really quite exciting. It seems to be even numbered elements that keep getting named. Well, for reasons that I don't entirely understand, even numbered elements are more stable than those that are odd numbers. It's something to do with the number of protons being more stable when you have an even number of protons. And as they get heavier and heavier, you're always on the tip of them decomposing. So if you have an even number, even a tiny difference in stability is going to make a difference. I suspect that certainly up to 118, the odd numbers will also be confirmed. But with the new row, there's a thought that 120 may be much more stable than 119.